Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to be talking about Newton's method for approximating zeros of a function. So let's suppose that we have a fairly complicated function, such as f of x equals 37x times 1 plus x to the 13th minus 2x minus 3 to the 7th plus 13, and we need to find a place where f of x is equal to zero. Now we could find the exact solution, potentially, however, that is going to be very hard to do, if not impossible to do, and find it algebraically. However, what we could do is we could use Newton's method to be able to approximate the solution. And the way that we're going to be doing that is by computing derivatives and finding linear approximations. So Newton's method is just an iterative process where we repeat the same process repeatedly to get better and better um, approximations to our solution. So it's important to note that this method does not give an exact algebraic solution. Instead, it's going to give us an approximate answer with more and more accurate, uh, with more and more accuracy in our decimal approximation. And so this is the following process that Newton's method uses. So start by making a guess for the solution. This can be literally any number. It helps if it's close to where you think a solution is, but that's not a requirement for this. Um, the only real thing that you have to pay attention to is that your guess is not somewhere where the derivative is equal to zero. However, if you're just picking a random number, that's probably not going to be the case, but it is something that you have to pay attention to. Um, once you have your first guess, so your initial guess, we're going to call it x sub zero, or x naught. Once we have our x naught, we then make a linear approximation, L of x, to the function at our guess. In other words, we are finding the tangent to the curve at that point, and then we are going to find the point on that line where that tangent line is equal to zero. So we are going to solve for the point x where our line is equal to zero. And then that x coordinate is going to be our new guess for x, and then we just repeat these steps until we have enough accuracy in our decimal places. So let's go back to our example. f of x equals seven times one plus x cubed minus 2x minus 3 to the 4th plus 13. Let's make our first guess be x sub 0 equals 0, so x naught is 0. First we need to figure out what's the derivative of the function. So using the chain rule and the power rule, we can find that the derivative of our function, so f prime of x, is 21 times 1 plus x squared minus 8 times 2x minus 3 to the 3rd. If we then compute our first linear approximation, or I guess our zeroth linear approximation, so L sub zero, we would get L sub zero is equal to F of x naught plus F prime of x naught times x minus x naught. So that means that L naught of x is equal to seven minus 81 plus zero, or not to the zero, sorry, that is part of the L naught. So it's seven minus 81 plus 13, so that's f of x naught, plus 21 minus eight times negative 27, that's f prime of x naught, times x minus zero, or x minus x naught, which gives us a negative 61 plus 237x. If we then solve for where that's equal to zero, we find that x one is going to be 61 over 237, which is about 0 0.257384. Now, what we are then going to do is that value, two, or 0 0.25784, that is now our x1, and we are going to just repeat that process again. So, computing L1 of x, we are going to just use the same formula. So L1 of x is f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1, and our line is going to be this pretty nasty looking thing. It's negative 11.232055 plus about 156 times x minus x1. That's an absolute mess, and this is why this is a method that is not usually done by hand. Instead, this is something that you can easily program a computer to do, and so this is how we have computers approximate functions. Um, most computers use better approximations. This is just a very simple one that is easy to get an idea of how these approximations work. Once we have our line, we need to solve for where that's equal to zero. So x2 is going to be 0 0.329387, 
and then we repeat this process to get L2 of x, so a second our second linear approximation, solve for where that's equal to 0, and we get x3, 0 0.333675104191, and so on. The decimal continues. What we are going to do is we want to continue this process until the decimal stays the same. So x3 is that number, and then x4 keeps the same first four digits, but then changes after that. x5 keeps the same first, what is that, that's nine digits? Yeah, the same nine, first nine digits, and then changes. But then x6 keeps all of those digits that we kept, all 12 of those digits. And so because they are now the same, we can see that we have converged onto a solution. That is accurate to 12 decimal places. We could continue to go on further to get a better approximation if we needed it, but this is how we would be able to get an approximation accurate to 12 decimal places. So here's a refresher on the method. Start, make a guess, make a line approximation for it, so find the tangent to the curve at, that, at your guess, and then find where that tangent intercepts the x-axis, and then repeat that process for new values of x. And if we want to use a formula to compute those different values of x, we can find our next x sub n by using this formula. So x sub n plus 1 is x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. So this is a way that we could have figured out all of those, like x2, x3, x4s, without having to compute the actual linear approximations. That, um, those calculations are just hidden underneath the hood of this formula. I hope this video was helpful in understanding Newton's method for approximating solutions to a function. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please check out some of my other videos so I can continue to make these and help other people learn about math as well. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and good luck with the rest of your math.